Our lectionary passage for the morning from 1 Corinthians, John's already given you a little bit of it. I'm going to start at the very tail end of chapter 12. Listen to God's word as it comes to us from the Apostle Paul and by God's spirit, a living word for us this day. And I will show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels but do not have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. And as for knowledge, it will come to an end. But we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part, but when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith Hope and love abide these three, and the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? O God of great love, open our hearts to your ways, that we might reflect that way in the world to which you send us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So last, last year on this first Sunday in February, Super Bowl Sunday, you may recall the lectionary text was Isaiah 40. They shall mount up with wings like E-A-G-L-E-S. E-A-G-L-E-S. And remember that? A, a prophetic word, a, a word of prophecy from Isaiah. Well. Today's lectionary, you just heard it, 1 Corinthians 13, and right in the middle of it, it says, prophecies, they will come to an end. (laughs) And so they have. I love a good game. And some people hate me for that. But but I love a, a good game, and today of all days, I wanna see a good game, a, a close game, a game worthy of the sport. Sure, I'm disappointed if the team I'm rooting for loses and everybody at the door at 8.30 asks me which one. <laughs> but, I, but I love a good game. I mean, don't, don't you want it to be about the mastery of the, the sport, the, the honing of the, the passing and, and running and, and blocking skills, the creative craftiness of coaches And the folks who come up with those plays and have the wisdom or the chutzpah to to throw in the goofy play, the unexpected play at just the right moment. Wouldn't you rather see two championship teams take it all the way down to the wire? And if you don't, then let me ask you, do you love football or do you love winning? Do you love football or you, do you love seeing the other team make mistakes? Do you love football? Are you thrilled when you win, even if it's in part because the refs made a bad call? Do you love football or do you love when your team's defensive tackle hits the other team's star quarterback so hard they're out for the rest of the game or maybe the season? With apologies to the non-football fans, 
that competitive let's kill them mindset is what came to mind of all things when I read this lectionary passage from 1 Corinthians 13 today and that may sound really funny the love chapter and most of us know this text from weddings but but this is not some disembodied poem a disembodied poem from the midst of scripture about a starry-eyed couple at the altar these words were written about anything but a happy couple about to get married. They're not talking about marriage at all. It's written to a church, a congregation so deep in conflict that it's about to internally divorce. The Corinthian Christians are doing destructive battle with one another, tackling one another over theological issues sacking each other on, on who's got the better gifts, blocking fellow believers by not sharing what all of them have been given, interfering with their neighbor's spiritual gifts, all the while boasting of their own, doing victory dances while they jockey for a position of leadership in the faith community. It's win at all costs. And I was, I was writing that, and, and then something struck me. And that is how good we seem to have gotten in this nation at electing folks like that as our representatives, uncompromising, because we want them to hold our way, my way of thinking. I wonder any longer do we, do we look for gifts of negotiation or, or respect or empathy, a willingness to compromise or work with others. No, we, we want our rep to win. Tackle hard. Hurt the other side. Take no prisoners. We, we like it when they're afflicted with what I would call Corinthianitis. Well, it shouldn't surprise us because clearly from the first century church in Corinth to the present day faith community, the church has all too often been afflicted with this same disease. And when it shows up, you and I know it, it wreaks havoc with our witness in the world, this Corinthianitis. I remember a few years ago there were, there were videos that went viral. It was the video of, of two groups of clergymen, Arminian and Greek Orthodox branches of Christianity. They were at the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem and they were fighting each other with broomsticks. They'd gotten in an argument about which portion of the shrine each of their groups was entitled to sweep clean. And they're beating each other with broomsticks. And they're in their robes. Well, the comments that got posted along with those videos on the internet were no surprise. <laughs> Look at the priest doing Jesus' work. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. Christianity the biggest joke with no punchline. Well, that's the behavior the world sees from the church. It's pretty hard for any of us to be invitational to anyone about the love of Jesus. Well, Paul's, Paul's words give you and me a clear diagnosis of Corinthianitis. If you and I are impatient with one another, if we're arrogant, rude, insisting we have it right and everyone else has it wrong, chances are we've got it. If we're irritable, resentful, gossiping about what's wrong with the fellow members down the pew, chances are you and I are infected. We've all seen it when the church gets like that. And it's ugly. 
And I love that this church is healthy and strong and vibrant and has a mission to take the love of God into the world. But church, what happens when we get outside the walls? Because it's the same deal. If, if, if Corinthianitis is what others experience from you and me in the world, in traffic, ooh. <laughs> in, the, in the checkout line, in the, in the office, in the stands at the stadium, getting on the airplane, going down the aisle, trying to put your luggage in the overhead, and they happen to find out we're church, Or they happen to know we're church because they're our kids, or our spouse, or our co-workers, or our neighbors. What have we shown them? Paul makes it clear what the cure is. It's love. He says, if you love, patience will come. If, if you love, jealousy and, and boasting will fall away because they're not necessary. If you love, you, you won't be arrogant or rude or irritable or resentful. If you love, you'll be a, a partner with others for the work of the kingdom and not insist on my way. Great preacher William Sloan Coffin once said, Christianity has not been tried and found lacking. It's been tried and found difficult. It's hard medicine because the the key element of Corinthianitis is is that I I don't want to love the ones (laughs) that I don't want to love. I only want to love the ones that are easy to love. Just imagine if God followed that rule. I don't know about you, but I'd be in a heap of trouble. And really deep beneath the, I mean, the real underlying infection in Corinthianitis is almost always the reality that I don't believe or feel that I really am loved or worthy or valued just as I am. Because that's when you and I need to try to win over others, try to put others down, try to make my way the way. But Paul reminds the Corinthians, and he reminds you and me today, that's that's not the case for the believer. Because you and I know we're loved. You and I know we're loved in in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and that knowledge changes everything. You don't have to worry. And the freedom in that is, it means you and I can play a good game. A good game. A good game for the sake of the world. May it be so. Amen.